All right, everyone. My name is Jason Master Mateo with my Amazon guy. Um, this is going to be a beginner tutorial on how to build a parentage using template flat file. Um, this will be a step by step process. We've got two items that we're going to parent together. And uh, I'll take you through each step here. Now, uh, people get confused a lot of times with verbiage here. And um, They'll call it merging or um, other words like that. Let me get my screen on to the computer here. All right. So basically, I've got a blue cup and a white cup. And right now, here's the blue cup and the white cup. I want them to be on the same page, kind of like this uh, product here. They've got a blue, a white. They've got some other colors here. But we want them all to be on the same page. And this is a parentage. Um, here, each color would be considered a child. And uh, the parent is where a lot of the confusion comes from. Uh, so basically, if we look at another variation we have on the account here, you see these variations, we can see that you know the parent here is this top one. Oh, this parentage doesn't have any uh, colors in it yet. Let's try this one. There we go. So. This particular parentage is a size parentage. It looks like there's a 30 ounce and maybe a 12 ounce or something like that. This would be the parent. It's a skew. It will have its own ASIN that's generated. Um, and that is where the children collect to have that, uh, to be able to display on the uh, Amazon page together. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to make sure that our products are actually on uh, the back end here. So upload your products via template, flat file if they don't exist yet, or manually, your choice. Um, but we need to make sure that they're here. So again, I have a blue and a white cup. We want to put them on the same uh, page. That, so we're going to parent them together. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here and go to catalog, add products via upload. And that'll take us to this page right here. And we want to download our spreadsheet. So click download spreadsheet and get product template. And we're on amazon.com. So we're going to click amazon.com here. All right, next we need to find our template. Well, how do we do that? We need to know what category we're in, right? There's a couple different ways. You can go into your product here and click edit. And uh, it'll uh, load here as soon as Amazon loads it. There we go. We're going to look for product identity. And we're looking for this item type keyword, right? So this says tumblers. But what if we forgot our actual category? Um, the other way you can look at it is if you go to the product detail page, you can see right here um, your entire browse node tree. So it looks like we're in home and kitchen and tumblers and water glasses. So we'll go back to our file here. And step one, we're looking for tumblers and water glasses. Search uh, home and kitchen, kitchen and dining, dining and entertainment, glassware and drinkware. Does that match our tree? Yes, it does. So that is our file. We're going to click select. And then we're going to scroll down the page here. And we're going to click generate template. All right. So now we have our Excel file, their template. Perfect. Let's let that open. On the yellow top right here, it's going to have to click uh, Enable Editing. All right. And there's a bunch of different little tabs here. Um, the most important ones here are obviously the template that you're going to be filling in. And then also the valid values, which tells you um, the valid values for any of the fields that we're going to be um, uh, putting in here. OK. Now, fair warning, depending on the product type, uh, there's different uh, information you may or may not need to put into these flat files, um, depending on the category or the product type, uh, that sort of thing. Um, but this is a pretty simple uh, version, uh, just the uh, tumblers. But we'll uh, start filling out the template together here. Uh, you'll notice that your category will automatically be put in here. So you can just click down, and we're going to have three. So. These two bottom ones are going to be our white and our blue cup. And this top one's going to be our parent that doesn't exist yet. 
so our brand name is going to be next here and that's momster and we're going to put that for all of them the brand name does have to match when you're doing a parentage so let's um, make this two pages here so that we can see so we can get our other information and we'll go like that and like that perfect okay so let's go back to our inventory and here they are right here so it's asking us for the skew so for the blue cup we'll put our skew in right here and for the white cup we'll put our skew in and then parent doesn't have a skew yet because it doesn't exist so let's just call this uh test parent perfect uh, product name for these, I just have some simple names. This is going to be your your uh, whatever your title is. So there's that one. There's this one. There we go. Oh, it's got some dots in there. Let's get rid of those. Not that it matters. It's just an example. But and then for the parent, we need a product name. So this is just going to be um, uh, Tumblr example. Perfect. Um, for your parent name, if you have different colors or whatever, it's just going to be your, your title that um, you've created, um, minus obviously whatever you have in the end, if it's a different color or, or a different size or anything like that. Um, product description, uh, we don't need to put any of that in right now. Uh, product ID type is going to be ASIN, A-S-I-N for all three. All right, and for the ASIN on the blue, it's right here. We'll copy that in. And for the ASIN on the white, we'll copy that in. There we go. And then uh, our parent, which doesn't exist, doesn't have an ASIN yet, but we wanna put ASIN here because uh, Amazon will generate an ASIN for the parent uh, once we uh, submit the file next here we're going to have item type keyword and for here it's going to be tumblers it's given to us because we put that in our file um now all this other information is going to be already on um the product page when you originally uploaded it so what we're going to be doing here is a partial update we're only updating the parentage which doesn't exist so you can leave some of these red um, blank. Sometimes, depending on the on the flat file, uh, it will want you to uh, update these. If you're doing a full update, and we can go to the valid values here to show you that, um, a full update, you need to make sure that all of the information is in there because uh, it will override or delete things that you do not put into the flat file. Partial update perfectly fine um, to uh, do, do what uh, you need to do here uh, as far as leaving things out and that sort of thing. Okay, so all of this, we're good. We already have our images, all good there. Now we're in the, this section right here, the variation. So for variation, we're gonna have parentage. The top one is our parent and these two are our children. Then we're gonna go grab that parent skew we made over here this top one go back over here and under parent skew we're gonna put why didn't it copy hold on let me go back and copy it again copy there we go under parent skew we're gonna put the parent skew next to the children do not put it next to the parent it will throw an error when you uh, uh upload the flat file uh, because a parent cannot be a child. <laughs> Relationship type, this is going to be variation. Variation. And then uh, for the variation theme, we have to go to our valid values. And it's, it's a simple one. It's color, but we want to make sure it's uh, valid for our file. It looks like it is right here. So we just take color and bring that back into color so this will be blank 
this will be blank for the parent, but the parent does need to be identified with the color, okay? Um, there are some files, uh, especially if you're doing, um, I think it's like three-step parentages, for some reason where uh, the file might kick back if you don't put variation here as well. Um, not sure why, it's just the way it is. And uh, next uh, part here, we don't need any of this stuff, is that partial update I uh, mentioned earlier. So we're gonna do partial update, partial update, and partial update. All right, and then there's a bunch of stuff that we're gonna skip. And I'm gonna make sure, I just got a notice here from Google Meet, doesn't realize I'm presenting. All right, so all this stuff, but we need color for sure. And here's our color. So the top one was blue. And the bottom one was white. And then color map, it's going to ask you for that too. It's literally the same thing. And white. There we go. And we'll keep scrolling along here. Don't need any of this stuff. All useless. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And Fulfillment center ID. This is important, important even on a on a partial update. So these two particular SKUs are FBM. So we're going to select default. Now, if you are also doing FBA uh, in the parentage, um, you would select uh, the Amazon NA, which is the identifier for North American. It's saying it's an FBA uh, product. If you don't select NA and you upload this file on an FBA product, it'll flip it to FBM. It's not the end of the world. You can go into your stranded inventory and there'll be a little button that says one click FBA. You click it and about five minutes later, it pushes it back to FBA. But um, just to save yourself the trouble there, uh, do that. Next, we're going to continue scrolling along here and scrolling along, oops. Let's keep going, let's keep going. We're looking for this red section. There it is. And in this red section, we just need to put one more thing here and it's the item condition. And here we just need to click new and new for the other two. Uh, you need this and almost all flat files to say new, obviously if you're selling new products or the file will kick back with an error. Uh, so you do need to put that in. So here we are. Our parent is good, looks good here. So we're good to save the file. So I'm going to uh, save this real quick. And we're going to go into our account now. So <clears throat> next up, we're gonna go back to catalog, add products via upload and Upload your spreadsheets and let me go find the folder real quick. I think it's in my downloads, obviously. <laughs> oh, there's my, let's do my taxes today. <laughs> One second, find the file. And there we are. Drop that file in there and click upload file now we have to wait a little bit we'll let that uh simmer and upload uh again very important uh to remember a few things on the flat file even if you're not doing a parentage uh if the ace if the am if the product is already on amazon um always use the asin as the identifier in the flat file if you use UPC or, or G10 or anything like that, or EAN, um, it always causes uh, errors for some reason. It'll say this SKU doesn't match to the, to the um, Amazon catalog. It'll say um, you don't have permission to upload um, you know, products for this brand, even though it's your brand, St weird stuff happens. Um, so just always use the ASIN when um, it is available. If you're doing a brand new um, product upload through the template flat file, that's when you're going to want to use your, your GS1 or, or your, your UBC. Let's uh, go back here and take a look where we're at on our upload. And it looks like it shouldn't take too long. It's a, it's a smaller file. 
it's important to uh, have a strategy with parenting. Um, you know, it helps out your, obviously depending on what you're selling, but helps out, uh, you know, get more, uh, eyes on your on your all your products especially if you have like 15 different colors like we saw in that one example um there are dangers in having a bloated parentage especially for mobile shoppers when you have you know usually over seven to ten items at once it gets after that it, it gets real confusing especially if you run out of stock on different sizes or anything like that i think everyone's um you know been in a situation where they're uh, online looking at a pair of shoes or something like that you finally find the style you like and then you go to click like your uh your size and it doesn't have your size and you're let down you're like oh, okay well maybe i don't need a new pair of shoes uh today um but different strategies there we're still waiting on an upload here and um what i'll do is continue to talk about this but i might cut this section out but <laughs> since we're waiting uh still looking well i know what we could do here uh so we have some other parentages in here and when there's an error with your with your parent um with your upload your, any thought file upload you'll get a feed processing summary it looks like something like this uh, there's also complete drafts where you can download this for example uh let's see what happens here That one's not going to work, but let's click the download the processing report. And this is what a processing report looks like. We'll open this up and processing report looks very similar to the file that you um, upload it has this feed processing summary. This will tell you all of the errors. So uh, this one says it's missing a SKU, for example. So simple stuff like that, you know, happens when you're uploading flat files. Uh, this one right here is saying it's uh, missing age age range description, uh, which is required. This looks like it was a product upload file. Um, you'll see errors and you'll also see number of records process. So even if you have warnings and errors, um, and it can still process the file a lot of times. So it will say right here, it would say one instead of zero. This particular file did not process. Um, it looks like it was missing um, some important things that were required to upload. And you can um, then go into the template here and you see product type was missing right here. I don't know what kind of file, maybe this was a test file or something like that, but it looks like there's not much um, entered in this at all, <laughs> to be honest. But let's go back here and now we can see our tumblers and water glasses has process successfully. It has a processing report, but it's not showing any errors. So let's go into our um, inventory and look at that. There it is right there. We have this. Now it's gonna take some time for it to update on the product detail page. Usually it takes like an hour or two for it to pop up here. And once it does, you will have your parentage. One other thing, if you ever want to break a parentage, if you ever want to, you know, say I wanted to sell the white and blue separately again because they're both doing really well on their own. Um, all you have to do is here's the parent skew right here. Click the parent and delete the product and listing. I know it looks scary, right? But you can uh, you can do that. It doesn't. It's not going to hurt you if you if you want to break the parentage. Um, if you want to create a new parentage, say, you know, we're also going to now sell um, a blue smaller cup and a white smaller cup, and we want them all in the same parentage. Uh, instead of going in and, and trying to update that flat file we did make, um, a lot of times uh, the easiest thing to do here is just delete the parent and then make a brand new parent. Um, you'll get less errors trying to modify an existing parentage. Parentage. It's not. It's not to say that you don't or you can't do it that way. I mean, I do do it often, especially if it's a large parentage and I don't want to completely remake it, but something simple like this, uh, time-wise, uh, it's easier to just delete the parent and then use that same file we had and uh, make a new parent uh, with the uh, new products. My name is Jason Master Mateo, and this is a um, parentage flat file tutorial. I hope everyone has a wonderful day and we'll talk to you next time.